Market Dynamics of Hoodoo and Voodoo in the Early 20th Century. Introduction. The early 20th century was a pivotal era for the commercialization of spiritual practices, particularly hoodoo and voodoo, as these traditions navigated the complexities of societal changes. Practitioners found unique ways to market their services and products. This chapter delves into the historical marketeering strategies used by practitioners, the cultural impacts of these practices, and their evolution into contemporary times. Early Practices of Market Dynamics Hoodoo and Voodoo Practitioners in the early 1900s tapped into a growing demand for spiritual solutions to everyday problems. They offered an array of services and curios aimed at those seeking quick fixes. From the jilted housewife, desperate to reclaim her husband's affection to the gambler down on his luck. These practitioners mastered the art of selling not just a service, but a promise of rapid, effortless results. Monetary strategies and cultural protection. For many in the black community, the act of selling dramatized services or dubious snake oils was seen not merely as predatory, but as a nuanced strategy to reclaim economic power. It provided a monetary stream while safeguarding the genuine elements of their spiritual traditions from those who might misuse or trivialize them. This dual approach allowed practitioners to maintain the sanctity of their authentic practices while exploiting the superficial curiosity of outsiders, often referred to pejoratively as curious colonizers. Impact of Hollywood and Cultural Appropriation As Hollywood's fascination with exoticism and the occult grew, it unfortunately contributed to the stigmatization and cultural appropriation of hoodoo and voodoo. Films and popular media often portrayed these practices in sensational, inaccurate ways, leading to a proliferation of marketeering that exploited the distorted images for entertainment and profit. Contemporary Reflections Today, the legacy of these early marketeering practices is visible in how spiritual services are advertised and consumed. While some practitioners strive to maintain the integrity and depth of these traditions, others continue to leverage the stereotypes and misconceptions for financial gain. This has created a complex landscape where genuine spiritual practices coexist with commodified versions, each impacting the other's perception and value. Conclusion. The early 1900s marked a significant chapter in the history of hoodoo and voodoo marketeering, setting precedents that resonate to this day. As we examine these practices, it becomes crucial to understand the fine line between economic survival and cultural integrity. Recognizing the roots and, and reasons behind these marketing strategies offers insight into the broader narrative of cultural preservation amid exploitation and appropriation. This understanding is vital as we navigate the ongoing challenges and opportunities within the spiritual marketplace.